Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Bible class. Today we're in the book of Judges. During this time, the people of Israel were not listening to God. The people were doing what they thought was right in their own eyes. God shows that over and over and over, he's trying to help his people come back to him and do the right thing. God sent judges over Israel, one great woman, fourteen men. They helped Israel fight their battles, led them back to God from sin. Othniel, Ehud, Shem, Gar, Deborah, Gideon, Abimelech, Tola, Jer, Jephthah, Ibzan, Elon, Abdon, Samson, Eli, Samuel. Okay. So today's judge we're going to hear about is Deborah. And Deborah was um, the only woman judge mentioned. She would sit out under a palm tree and people would come to her and ask for her advice and her leadership. So one of the things you can make today is a palm tree. So you can get a paper towel roll like this and add some leaves to it. So, all you need to do is take a piece of construction paper. I folded mine four times over, and now I'm going to make some leaves. So, I just made four leaves, and I could make them fancy, or just leave them like this. So I want to make them a little bit fancy, I can cut pieces like that. Maybe fold them a little bit in the middle. So now I have four palm leaves and I'm going to put them on the palm tree. With this you can use tape or glue, whatever you have. So I'm just going to take these on the inside and they can fold over, fold over like that. There you have Deborah's palm tree that she sits underneath and helps the people. After the death of a judge called Ehud, God's people turned to worshiping false gods again. As a result, God let them be conquered by King Jabin of Hazor, a Canaanite king. The commander of King Jabin's army was Sisera, who lived in Harasheth Hagoyim. Sisera, who had 900 iron chariots, ruthlessly oppressed the Israelites for 20 years. Then they cried out to God for help. Deborah, the wife of Lapidoth, was a prophetess who was judging Israel at that time. She would sit under the palm of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel, and the Israelites would go to her for advice and to settle their arguments by God's laws. One day, Deborah sent for Barak, son of Abinoam, who lived in Kadesh in the region of Naphtali. Barak traveled south to meet her. Deborah told him, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, commands you to do. Gather 10,000 warriors from the tribes of Naphtali and Zebulun at Mount Tabor. I will call out Sisera, commander of Jabin's army, along with his chariots and warriors, to the Kishon River. There, I will give you victory over him. Barak replied, I will go, but only if you go with me. Very well, Deborah replied, I will go with you, but you will receive no honor in this venture, for the Lord's victory over Sisera will be at the hands of a woman. So Deborah went with him. Barak called together the tribes of Zebulun and Naphtali, who lived east of Lake Galilee, 
and 10,000 warriors went with him in Deborah to Mount Tabor. When Sisera heard that Barak had gone up to Mount Tabor, he called for all 900 of his iron chariots and all his warriors, and they marched from Harasheth to Goyim to the Kishon River. Deborah said to Barak, Get ready. This is the day the Lord will give you victory over Sisera. The Lord is marching ahead of you. It had rained and the Kishon River was in flood. Barak led his 10,000 warriors down the slopes of Mount Tabor into battle. Sisera's chariots got bogged down in the wet clay and his warriors abandoned them to flee on foot. Barak chased them all the way to Harasheth Hagoyim, killing all of Sisera's warriors. However, Sisera fled towards Zayananim, where Haber the Kenite had pitched his tent. He was on friendly terms with King Jabin of Hazor. Haber's wife was called Jael. Jael went out to meet Sisera and said, Hide in my tent, sir. Don't be afraid. So he went into her tent. She gave him milk to quench his thirst and then hid him under a blanket. Stand at the door of the tent, he told her. If anyone comes, say there is no one here. When Barak came looking for Sisera, Jael went out to meet him. Come, and I will show you the man you are looking for, she said. Barak followed her into the tent and found Sisera lying there dead. From that time on, Israel became stronger and stronger until they finally destroyed King Jabin and lived in freedom. Deborah wrote a victory song, which they sang in celebration. There was peace in the land for the next 40 years. So one more thing you can do is make a mud painting. So I've got some flour. Got some flour and I'm going to add a little bit of water. So I have a little Paste. Okay, and then instead of dirt, I'm going to add a little bit of coffee grounds in here. And this is just used coffee grounds out of our coffee maker. If you have a Keurig, you could just have a grown-up cut open the pod for you. But I'm just going to add some coffee grounds to my mix here so it looks like mud. And in our story today, army that was trying to defeat the Israelites got stuck in the mud because God made the area very muddy and so the soldiers were stuck and they couldn't go to battle because they were all stuck in the mud. Okay, that looks almost like something you can eat, but please do not because that would be really gross and disgusting. All right, so I'm going to take this mud, this coffee mud, and just smear it on my paper here. Okay, now I've got my mud. I want to get my chariots in there. So a chariot is going to have some wheels. And so I'm going to use this cardboard here and cut out some wheels. This is just a box. Okay, so I'm cutting out some wheels. We'll 
or my chariot. And these are going to get stuck in the mud, but I'm going to go ahead and put some glue on them first. Okay, so I'll just stick these down. Stick these down into the mud. And now I need the base of the chariot. I'm just going to cut the part where the rider sits. It goes like that. So I'm going to put some glue on that. And then Put that there. And then there's a, a little pole that you attach the horse to. So I'm going to add that. Okay, now I need a horse, huh? Okay, so I could draw a horse, I could paint a horse, I could cut out a paper horse. I think I'll just draw a horse. Okay, so my horse, see his neck would go here, he's got some ears, some hair. His legs are getting stuck in the mud. He's got his tail here. He is not happy. He's ready for somebody to get him out of the mud. So there we have my mud painting. This is Cicero's army getting stuck in the mud. Thanks for being with us today. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much for the wonderful blessings you've given us. And please help us to be always listening to you and to always follow you. And thank you for sending your son, Jesus, in your son's holy and precious name. Amen. Thanks for joining us. Hope you have a great week. Bye-bye.